with your hosts, Wayne Noon, Fred Norman, and Uncle Saxon. Is that better? That's better. Mm. It's a lot better. Now you don't sound like this. Well, just let me, I, it's because you're so close to my heart. Well. <laughs> All right, Colonel. <laughs> Get her on. <laughs> yeah, don't you see the striking resemblance? Fucking blow. <laughs> Why have you had the same KFC in your you. basement for a week? Because when we we did the show, I just I left. I don't come back down here till the next week. <laughs> I got a lot of cups over here, and I got uh, this uh, can of Dr Pepper that I've had there probably for like a month. I've been busy. What do you want me to tell you? All right. Welcome to Rat Salad Review. Today we are here with. Anybody want to say who? Tom Croxton of oh. Hex Vortices, Thor, and formerly of Impaler, The Unholy, and Acheron. All awesome bands. Wow. Thank you. Very cool. Welcome, Hello. Tom. He's kind of a cool guy on top of it. And hell of a drummer. Dude, I'm out of shiny quarters. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> so, Tom. What's yeah. it like? Uh, what's it like being in Thor? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's a runaway freight train. It's bizarre. Um, literally, the first show I did two years ago was the Porosphere Festival in Pori, Finland, with uh, Testament. Okay. Before we went, uh, me and John Leibel and uh, Matt McNally would practice. Us three are local. Ted, our bass player, is in Denver. And Thor himself lives in Vancouver, British Columbia. So we did a major European festival without a full band practice. Wow. So it was it was pretty crazy. And the shows have been, you know, off the hook. The tours are great. You know? Yeah. Nice to be on a major label, you know? Yeah. Movie, I'm, the second movie, the follow-up to I Am Thor is out. And that's really great. Oh, is it oh, on the Netflix? Chicks. That's the Chicks. Start- What's that? The chicks. I gotta introduce you to my girlfriend real quick. Oh, Just, okay. Uh, it's only take a second. Okay. What I the... got all excited there. For oh that. my god! I knew it. <laughs> oh, I knew it. This is my girlfriend Melissa. <laughs> that poor woman. Get her out of the trunk. You still got it, Johnny. <laughs> oh, I'm calling nine one one. I fucking love you. Let's get her out of here. <laughs> uh, Her expression was hilarious. <laughs> wow. Well. Has not kidnapped. You're the fucking best. I love you. Oh my god. Yeah, we're not your average review show. <laughs> yeah. Rats out of the variety show. I don't know what the. But oh, does uh, that hey, mean we can call up? Fake Jan from the Brady Smile Time Variety Hour. Oh, nice. I don't even know what that is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Must be a Minnesota thing. I have no idea. Fucking laughing yeah, all over Brady again. Brady Bunch, after it went off the air, they did a variety show, but uh, Eve Plum, the actress that played Jan, refused to do it, so they replaced her with a Clearly younger and different looking girl. <laughs> <laughs> and Marshall had the greatest camel toe in history. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Tom what just wants did? to. No, Marsha. <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> anyway, back to Tom. This is not about you guys. God. <laughs> Sorry. Jeez, Sorry, Christ, Tom. Have... It's not often we have a guest in the, you know, you guys got to. Straighten yourselves out. But I just want to say at one hour, 38 minutes, and 46 <laughs> seconds in the return of horror high, you get a really nice shot of Marsha Brady's cleavage. Oh, boy. Mm. All right. Well, I was... <laughs> uh, all right. So I was listening to that Thor album today. It's very good. I like it a lot. Thank you. 
Yeah, and um, I know one thing I do notice is like all the songs are very different. Not like uh, different like uh, musical way, but like they sound different. Like they were they recorded all different times or different places or something. Actually, or? the the interesting thing about that album is um, we wrote it as an EP, thinking oh. uh, you know because the true Thor band, which is you know John Lybel, me, um, obviously John Thor and Ted Ted Licky, um, we were able to come up with four songs. We were working really, we were touring, and then he worked really hard on the movie. So. The true Thor band is on the first four songs, oh. and then it's he, he, these are like demos he did throughout, you know, the last year or two with other people. It's got uh, Frank Meyer, who is on uh, uh, some older Thor albums uh, like Thor versus the World and Metal Avenger. Okay. So, oh, so I guess yeah. that would explain why there's a little bit of difference in all the other songs from. Right, and that's yeah. why it goes from really heavy to. Yeah, it goes to like a seventies kind of. It's it's good. The the song right after, it sounds like a U two song to me. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm not responsible for that one. Yeah, I, I don't want to say mellower. But there's I, there's great stuff yeah. on it. Don't get me wrong. I'm just you know we only had the time to do the four songs. Literally, one of them is a Dawn of Valor song that Ted and John had from their previous band, and that's okay. Victory, the instrumental. Oh, very cool. So where did you actually meet John Michael Thor? I mean, that's 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 weird that you've been a Minneapolis guy your whole life, or yeah. you know your career has been. Um, how the hell did you meet him? So we did uh, the zombie pub crawl at First Avenue, and it right was, on. And we, Bill was responsible for hiring the the big band, so right. he he called John and had Thor set up for it, but Thor kind of. He travels alone, and then he, he'd go from different city, city to city with different bands. That's about as dangerous as it gets. So, so which, uh, which uh, zombie pro pro ball was that? Was that 2013, 14? Uh, let's see. I've been in the band since 17, so I'd say it was six, 2016, maybe 2015. Okay. So it had gotten pretty big by then, yeah. Um, nightmare. <laughs> yes, you say? No, no flying starfish. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, when you do shows like that, uh, the zombie pub crawl, they shut the bands come in and then they shut down the perimeter until everything's ready, and you're stuck literally for hours and nothing yeah. to do. So um, we went over to the depot next door, me and John Thor, and. Um, Hit it off. I mean, I didn't really know him at the time, but after that, I mean, it, it worked great. And, you know, I got the literally the day I quit Impaler, I got the job with Thor. Oh, wow. Same day, an hour. Oh. It's crazy. Wow. So that worked out for you. That totally worked yeah. out. Yeah. Nice. So why did you leave Impaler? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's just say everything's worked out. They're my buddies now. Yeah. Oh, good. All there right. was there was um a shift in power, I guess. Um, things kind of blew apart. We were working on an album for a couple of years, which unfortunately is a lost album. It was going to be called Circus of Horrors, mm -hmm. and I think it completely topped Cryptozoology. It was super technical. It was very ambitious. Um, well, that's saying something because Cryptozoology is an awesome album. It you. really is. Yeah, that's one of my favorite so, Mailer records. So you guys would have loved the next one, but unfortunately it's... Uh, <laughs> Kyle is in Michigan. Um, right. We still might... Re he and I might release it under a different name. Okay. Yeah. That'd be cool. I, I, know, I, I know Mike was in the band Yeah. Uh, while you were in the band at the end there. Yeah, um, we had combat members at the time, yeah. But he's he's out now, right? Uh, he's making money hand over fist, and girls are gyrating in front of him at shows. So, of course, Impaler's right the F out. Can I swear on this? <laughs> oh, yeah. Of oh, course. Yeah. smoke weed on here sometimes. <laughs> you know, you're good. Yeah. So, yeah, he's happy where he is. Uh, he does the cover band Rough House, so he's doing good. Oh, okay. All right. Fuck yeah. all that. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh. Hex Vortices. The new Hex Vortices. Well, the only... You did a, a three-track uh, 
kind of demo thing. Yeah. And that was just a, a crank turner. You made us wait a long time for this album to come out. Yeah. It was totally worth it. Oh, that's awesome. That's what I wanted. Totally to worth it. This We haven't had a true Minneapolis thrash album of this caliber in as long as I can remember. And you're more into the scene than I am, obviously, or Greg. Um, but this is a true Minneapolis thrash gem. And uh, I crank, I've, I've, you know, I told you I, I wanted to wait until I could get the T-shirt and Triple X. But I went and got the fucking album anyways. I'll wait for the T-shirt for a later date. <laughs> um, it's been in my car and on my computer. And I've listened to it every day for the last week and a half. And uh, I've been a little busy last week and a half, but it's been in my rotation, and I can't stop playing it. That's awesome. Thank you, brother. Absolutely. We're, we're very proud of it. You should be. Yeah, it's cool. It's the first time I've ever heard of, uh, of uh, the band. These guy, Uncle Saxon uh, introduced me. Oh, so, <laughs> yeah. okay. Yeah, so I've been listening to it. It's really good. I like it. I do enjoy it a lot. Thank you. You're, you're, I love your drumming. I appreciate that much. <laughs> the thing is, uh, you know, like he was saying, it, it was we made everyone wait. We've been a band for five years and only had an EP out, so oh, wow. and that we gave away. It was like a demo, and uh. you know, I kept saying, "Now oh, we got to get in the studio." And you know, there was a lot of time issues. I mean, I'd go on; there'd be things going on left and right. We were originally I was still in Impaler when when Hex started and we did some tours and uh, trying to write that album, the horrible, horribly, uh, sadly lost album. Uh, Kyle became um, a roadie for Power Man 5000, which kept putting everything, it just kept pushing things aside. And then I joined Thor, I'm doing more touring. So finally, I have time off, like, let's get in the studio, let's do it. And finally it's out. Nice. So how did the band get together? Uh, when I, let's see, uh, it was in a band called Elder God. Okay. And um, that kind of, when it dissolved, immediately upon me posting that we're done as a band, Andy called me and said, I want to jam. So, <laughs> so yeah, he and I hooked up and started writing. Uh, Revival Fires was literally the first song we worked on together. Oh, nice. Um. Dan Nelson came. He was with Andy earlier, but that project fizzled. So when I, I was with Andy, uh, he said, Dan is a great bass player. We'll have him come in. And so he was in pretty quick after that again. And then we had Tim Morton from Dying Euphoria for a while, which, you know, obviously he's not in the band. And we have Matt Hamilton now. So mm. well, you make it sound so easy. <laughs> it wasn't. It was not. <laughs> Jeez, I, I've been working on four songs for the last two years. <laughs> uh, come on, Greg. You got any questions for here uh, for Tom? You're just gonna sit there and smoke the whole show? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I mean, you, you covered the basic stuff I did. All right. Well. Thanks for coming on, Tom. See you later. Oh, well, no. That's... See ya. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, one thing I will say, even though it's not related to Hex, uh, you mentioned the uh, the Acheron, the Pain Dominion, uh, maybe yeah. re-released. Yeah. Um, it's oh, over have. 25 years old. We wanted to do it as a 25th year anniversary. I was the first band when I moved to Minnesota that uh, I started with uh, Wade Laszlo, and it became... Uh, the Wade Laszlo. Wow. Okay. Yeah. You know yep. Wade? Oh, I know Wade. So you know I was the drummer on the Unholy albums. I, uh, my Uncle Saxon's true Hollywood story for tonight is about the Unholy. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, doesn't Wade. mean anything to you, but it means something to these guys. So. <laughs> Wade, Wade was on the first Acheron album, Prophecies Unholy. Which huh? I think he might have just divided the name and took that part, but um, we became like a Vicious Rumors Annihilator sort of sounding band afterward, which was the Pain Dominion. That one. 
Wow, Very came pre- long, long out of print. Came prepared. Yeah. I thought we were playing music. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I was explaining to him about YouTube and how the whole yes, shit yes. down. So. Yes. So, yeah, that it's... Um, I was very proud of that album that came out in 93. Hmm. And uh, we thought we'd do it because uh, Sean um, Flynn, who was our singer back then as MS, he was uh, in the local Soylent Green, a very, mm-hmm. very good band. And My my homeboy, um, Greg? No, uh, Jim, Jim Miller. Oh, yeah. You, yeah, Miller. that's Soylent Green. That's my yeah. homeboy. Yep. Yeah, and uh, Jason Merkins from uh, Disturbed Deranged. Yep. Yep. Dennis so my, still one. I mean, I lived with the guys, so. Yeah. You ever party at the greenhouse? Are you kidding me? <laughs> wow. Well, you know what? I was there too, and we must have really been messed up because. Well, know. Decker was there. You remember that, I'm sure. What's that? Don Decker was there. Nobody forgets oh, yeah. that. Uh, Sean yep. Decker, then. He went by his. Yeah, house. exactly. Yep. Double D. The greenhouse. Right on. <laughs> yep. Columbia Heights, right? No, it's uh, somewhere out in Roseville. Yeah, that direction, though. Yeah, off Lexington, out. I believe. Somewhere out there. Thank you, baby girl. I was always driven up. It's kind of cloudy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've still got that Soil and Green album. It's, uh, it's chaotic, but it's... You yeah, know, I mean, I I used to paint with those guys, so yeah, yeah. I was not aware there was a Soylent Green from Minnesota. Yeah. I love the death metal band, but I will say I know the one. They were great. Uh, yeah. Soylent Green is a total thrash band from like eighty nine, ninety. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. The late John Woodbury was in it at a point. Right. Yeah, it was good stuff. All right, cool. So I really like the uh, artwork on the uh, Hex album. It looks really oh, cool. Who yeah. did that? Whose uh, design was that? You know, I I can't think of his name. <laughs> <laughs> well, who's I, was it his idea, or did you guys have the idea of what you wanted for the album cover? Well, you know, we had uh, the hardest time, me and Andy and uh, Dan had the hardest time trying to figure out the cover i came up with tons of ideas it was just it was a struggle to get the cover <laughs> then just one day like what about this okay good <laughs> <laughs> uh, we wanted something because the lyrics of revival fires is you know pretty intense oh, yeah. um and it matt if it has that feel immediately right. when i saw it like yeah that's what that's what that song's about because you see the guy, he's like, you know, it, is it a gun? Is he just like saying, hey, but he's mm. completely engulfed in flames. It's Yeah. So, yeah, it's open for interpretation, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I really I like that. I think that's the best song on the album, by the way. The title the, track. Title track, yeah. yeah. Yep. I, Honestly, that's probably my favorite song on the record. Really? That, that's I cool. I love that track. Yeah. Nice. All oh, right, cool. Yeah, I like the drum sound you got on this album too. It's very, um, it's not very. Um, uh, what are you gonna say? You know, like most bands now, they they do everything with like not all these triggered. plugs and what's that? Uh, not huh? triggered. No, not triggered. It's very roomy and very real sounding. It's. I made a point to go in there and say I didn't want to use. There's no click tracks. There's no fancy effects. That is exactly how Hex Wordacy sounds. Yeah. There's no. That's my drum kit in there, and he had to buy extra mics for really? my drums, which is pretty funny. No shit. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's not triggers. You're hearing my drum kit. Yeah, yeah. So that's, you, that's you the way got those be. mics. Or? What's that? Are those mics yours now? Uh, I, I brought in some of my own, but no, he he had his own stuff there too. Oh okay. <laughs> you didn't walk of... off. With... <laughs> uh, no, you've been talking. Right? <laughs> we'll edit uh, this part out. This is Enrique, and I'm Felipe, <laughs> man. Uh... We'll, we'll edit this out of the show. This is an anvil at the old Uptown Theater, I can tell you that. <laughs> well, uh, what kind of uh, drum kit do you have there? I was looking at your pictures the other day, because when I made the uh, you know, the advertisement thing, to well, say you were going to be on the show. When I was I... an Impaler, I got an endorsement through... Uh... 
this place in Huntington Beach, California. It's called the Predator. Okay. It's a birch kit. Um, the drums are great. The hardware sucks. So I had to, uh. my free drum kit cost about 1200 in hardware. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, they sound good. I guess that's what matters. My snare is the Vinnie Paul signature pearl. Oh, okay. The real thing. So nice. I should nice. take that out, but I do. No. <laughs> Sounds too good not to use. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, I, I love yeah. this. Yeah. yeah, the whole, the whole drum kit. song on uh, Revival Fires, Tom? What's that? What's your favorite song on Revival Fires? Hmm. Well, um, good question. Um, maybe Hammer to Nail? Mm. Yep, that's a shredder. Yeah. Yeah, I'm proud of. I mean, Revival has a warm place in my heart because that's that's the very start of the whole thing. So hmm. now, did, um, are those all new songs you wrote? No. Like, or it's all from over the five year period? Yeah, I mean, we we actually have, like I said, the whole thing taking so long to record because I've been busy doing so much other stuff. That since this album's come out, we actually have like three or four, like, well, one completed song, but three in the works already. So oh, wow. hopefully, I mean, maybe it'll come out next year, another album, who knows? Mm. Or we'll wait another five years and. <laughs> well, you know, you know, there are flexi discs they're making yeah, that's again. True. That's so. true. <laughs> Put on cassette, you know. Yeah, let's get, let's get a subscription to the Daily Mail. <laughs> <laughs> They're really making flexi discs again. Yeah, they they've really? started doing that. It's uh it's become a collector's thing again. I I I could only see people buying them to hang them on a wall because flexi discs always sounded like shit because yeah. they were so oh, yeah. thin. Yeah, yeah. there's actually a couple of impaler flexies floating Dude, around uh, somewhere. A friend of Johnny's and mine, Dan Mezidal. Hey, Dan, because I know you're hey, here Daddy. watching this. Yeah, he, he, he comments he on a bunch of cassettes at a flea market a little while ago and threw them up on eBay for the hell of it. Yeah. He got over fifty dollars for Metallica kill them all. Holy wow. crap! I have the the true Megaforce with the fists on cassette. No shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know what he's doing? He gets home. being old. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, Tom? About 50, 52, 53? You nailed it. Fifty-two. There you go. It'll be you 53 on August 3rd, our CD release party locally. Nice. Where's it going to be? Well, we'll, so... we'll both be there. Yep. yep. Where's For that going to be, in case anybody's and, watching? And uh, Part Wolf, it used to be the Nomad, West okay. Bank. Oh, all right. Yep. Very cool. Um, God, you just said something to him, and I wanted to... Oh, are you a collector with uh, you know, albums and uh, CDs and oh, stuff yeah. like that? Yeah. What's behind you it resembles my room. Oh, really? Yeah, I got tons and tons of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my house, I, uh, I'm not married, so my house is exact, exactly the way I wanted. It's <laughs> lucky. Floor, uh, <laughs> both floors, it's full, full on man cave. It's a horror movie, heavy metal oh, nice. museum. Wow, really cool. Wow, man, you should have had a shame you didn't have a phone. You can take us on a little trip around your house there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have to upgrade uh, your phone. <laughs> speaking, of, uh, speaking of horror fans, uh, do you stay in touch with Eric's family at all? or Eric Mitchell? Yeah. No, oh, yeah. yeah. I talked to Sally quite a bit. Okay. She doing uh, all right? Is she, well, we hit the year mark on uh, June 28th, and she took that kind of hard. Yeah. Um, you know? Yeah, it, it, it sucks, but, you know, that's... I really didn't know her that well. I met her once when he was alive, but I, you know, really got close to her since he passed. Cause Good. It, it was a private funeral. She let me and Bill go. We were pallbearers, so, you know. That's a yeah. real shitty fucking thing right there. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I'm lost. I'm sorry? Uh, I, I'm, I'm lost. lost. I don't know what's going on. And Baylor time. bass player Eric Mitchell died last year uh, of prostate cancer. Oh, really? Okay. Wow. That sucks. 
and he was so much more than a bandmate. He was family to me, you know. And All right. Mm. And to the fans. I mean, a fan yep. favorite. Yeah. Yep. Commander's great. Don't get me wrong on Commander. <laughs> Eric is who I used to correspond with when yeah. I would write you guys letters out here. And he was always awesome, always sending me, uh, well, it's mostly CDRs of the stuff. But yeah. it was so cool that, you know, a guy in the band was willing to just yeah. share all this music. He, yeah. Anyone talk to him about the band? He always had picks. He'd give him picks. And, mm. yeah. Hey, Tom, you want to you wanna know something funny? Sure. You were the drummer in Impaler, and I've got a cat named Meaty Bob Johnson. Do you really? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's true funny. story. Wow. She's been named Meaty Bob Johnson for 15 years, and Did you she's wonderful. Did you hear about Meaty Bob Johnson? Uh, he's, he's been kind of lost in space, hasn't he? Uh, we found out he passed away, and nobody Oh, knew. no. It was like... A, a few years, and it's none of Impaler knew. Bill heard about it, and he texted me one day, like, "Check this out!" <laughs> like, you're just complete shock. Like, oh my god, we had no idea. So yeah. Well, his name lives on in a feline roaming That's around true. my trailer somewhere right now. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I always said I was when people would bring albums for us to sign or something, and if it was. You know, Rise of the Mutants. Rise of the Mutants, or right. if we had brains, I'd always go, Well, I'm not that guy, but I'm Meteor Tom. Because <laughs> <laughs> if we were on a seesaw, I would fling that fucker. <laughs> <laughs> he would be out in space, right on. <laughs> yeah, That's you know, great. You crack that whip. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Not too funny. So, uh, when's the uh, next tour with uh, Thor going on? September nineteenth. Um, it starts. It's in uh, nothing local, unfortunately. It's um, mm. all over the place. I don't, the booking agency we have just likes to. Literally, it's uh, we're in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Come mm. back. We're doing Pittsburgh, Nashville, and then Dallas. Oh wow. <laughs> So, <laughs> but but they did get you guys on the bill before the puppet show, right? Uh, right. Better. <laughs> <laughs> the Thor experience. <laughs> so we we can Thor tours are always flight, you know. Yeah. It, we might have to do a jaunt by van if it's anything in close proximity, but it's getting it's doing a show, trying to get to sleep in the hotel, waking up, butt crack of dawn. Mm. Running to the airport and going to the next one. And wow. yeah, Thor's in his mid sixties, but he did mm. he did a very extensive tour yeah. recently, you know. We were all over Killed the place. Killed in Minneapolis. You guys absolutely rocked Lee's Thanks, uh, that in was Minneapolis. A fun it was so good. Yeah. yeah, it was a lot of fun. You like yeah. doing all that uh... at some point, oh, Yeah, that'd be cool. You gotta tell me, I, I've seen Thor four times in my life now. Yeah. Uh, this last time with you, but he always does that uh, that like thing from uh, Animal House where everybody gets down on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Where the hell did that come from? Do you even know? I have no idea. It's always a surprise what he does on stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was a new one during Thunderhawk. I was like, <laughs> yeah, everybody's doing the crappy flop, Wayne. It's it's pretty yeah. fucking wild. <laughs> <laughs> Now are, are you in the? Uh, yeah. <laughs> are you in the next movie too? The second one? Yes. You are okay. Yeah, That's on Netflix. Uh, hope we're hoping to get it on there. Um, okay. I think uh, sometime in September, Nathan Block's got a theater in uh, Woodbury or Oakdale. Oakdale. I think I it's know. Oakdale. Yeah. Oakdale. That we're gonna be doing a showing there. We're just getting that set up. So, hmm. Return of the Thunderhawk. It's a pretty cool. Ted did a great job. Yeah. So it's, yeah, I like the first one was really good. I liked that one a lot. That's yeah. what actually that's what really made me get into Thor because I really I, I've heard of him, you know. And yeah. then I watched that documentary and then I watched it. And I'm like, wow, this guy's got some cool stuff. So I started buying his stuff. True metal, true metal. Thor has always been true traditional metal, yeah. North American metal, no frills, 
fucking in your face. Um, Tex Vortices, on the other hand, will rip your yeah, face off. Completely different. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, don't don't go to a, a Hex Vortice show thinking you're going to see Thor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but do go expecting you, you, to thrash you, and get brutalized. You will see a whole different kind of hammer. <laughs> <laughs> With stolen mics and all. <laughs> do you think the two bands would ever do shows together or no? You know, um, is your health good enough to do two shows together? Yeah, it's a lot of work. I, you know, I've done, uh, I've opened for the other band I was in, so I'm, I'm fine with that. I think, I think John Thor would be fine with it. Just the opportunity hasn't came up. So, yeah. uh, the day that Thor played in town, Matt was in a wedding. So that was right <laughs> out, but it was, it was pondered. Mm. Oh, nice. what does he think about the, what does he think about Hex Vortices as even? Did he listen to it yet or anything? Or uh, you know, he's he actually is. Uh, he liked us on Facebook, which is huge. <laughs> so, holy crap! It's it's awesome. awesome. So yeah, he's he's supportive. Uh, he, you know, great dude. Yeah. If uh, you know, you, you'll if you watch the movie and you see, like you said, how you got into him and how how yeah. it seems such a cool guy. Yeah. When you know him personally, he is mm. so much more than that. He he'll drop everything. He's super tired after a show. Like, yeah, uh, yeah we, 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 we badgered him after the show. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. he was Greg's still head. pulling up to crush Greg's head in a picture. So, <laughs> yeah, that was. Awesome. Have you yeah. seen that on Facebook? No. Oh I yeah, I got a picture of him crushing my head. It's great. Nice. He was so yeah, so but he, he will stay there until every fan is. You know, he'll anyone who wants to meet him, he's got time for him, and then then he'll go and relax. That's yeah, cool. I actually had to give him an arm into the Uber when you guys left that night. Yeah. I'm like, I'll help you into the Uber. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you saw that. That first guy drove away from us. Yeah, that bitch. <laughs> we were going to get in, and all of a sudden, like, where the hell is he going? <laughs> all right. Well, welcome to Minneapolis. Back. Welcome back to Minneapolis, right? <laughs> oh, so, um... Just a real quick Uncle Saxon's true Hollywood story. The sec the last time I saw him, before I saw him with uh, you guys uh, at Lee's, um, he was still doing the bending the rods and oh. all this. That that oh. shtick. Mm. He actually bent his microphone stand in half. This is yep. got to be 2012, probably somewhere in there. Yeah. It was at the Triple Rock. Yeah. And... I ran up and I grabbed his mic stand, his busted in half mic stand, and I ran out the door. And it's been in my garage ever since. Nice. <laughs> he actually still does the mic stand thing. He did that in Sweden. Oh, is that right? Yeah, this bodybuilder <laughs> come up and fight with him, and then he still just. And it wasn't, you know, I don't even think it was, you know, part of the uh, staff. It wasn't even his. He just like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love to see him take on Ross the Boss live on stage, <laughs> and that and that whole thing, the bending of, in Sweden, is on that movie. So, oh, okay. it is. Yeah. Well, I've got a little piece of rock and roll memorabilia that nobody can ever ever touch. Yeah, say so they've got a bent mic stand from Thor. Other than <laughs> oh, man. that's really cool. That or one of the hot water bottles back in the day. Oh Thor sure, the sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. Uh, so, um, what what kind of bands are you into? You know, well, um, obviously thrash. <laughs> That's, yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> Judas Priest got the oh, Defenders nice. tattoo. That was hey, a life changing guys. album. Wow. Uh, I ask you about that. Yeah. Uh, Rush, obviously, as a drummer, you know, got the big drum kit. Yeah. Um, but. King Diamond, you know, Testament, just tons, tons of bands. Nice. Were you a self-taught drummer, or did you take lessons? I am. You yeah, are? And I learned. Okay. That's the worst teacher you can have, because you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. So, that being said, like, when you hit a drum, you're supposed to have a loose grip. Yeah. You use a finger control, which I do, but you're supposed to have a loose grip when you hit, so it's just constantly a boop, where it's got that reflex. I have a death grip on my stick, so all of these years... 
30 some years. I'm taking all that impact. Yeah. So after, at the end of a show, like, don't touch me, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, so it, yeah, it hurts, but yeah. You're a pounder. Bill's old moniker. <laughs> you haven't gotten any like carpal tunnel or anything? I have numbness after yeah. the show. Mm-hmm. Um, like right in, like right. past the wrist, behind, by the pinky. Mm-hmm. But just you're, you remind me a lot of you remind me a lot of Dan Beeler from Exciter. Yeah. yeah. Just the fucking you, you you slam those drums like uh well, I won't say anything. You know, what you know what I mean. You fucking slam those drums hard. Got to Towns. do a show with Beeler uh, before he rejoined Exciter. It was a uh, Headbangers Open Air in Baylor days. And they did only Exciter stuff, pounding metal. And, oh, it was great. So, cool. Yeah. Oh, so fucking drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Something about European beer, I don't know. <laughs> German. German. What's your uh, the favorite show you've played so far? Definitely last year we did um, the South Park Festival in Tampere, Finland. Mm-hmm. Uh, estimated 20,000 people, and we were main stage. Uh, wow. We were with Ghost. Halloween was doing the Pumpkins United. Yeah. Except was on the bill. Amorphous was just insane. Wow. So, yeah, that that kind of just pushed everything aside. Twisted Sister, we were direct support, and Baylor was in 2006. That was great. Oh, really? Oh, wow, I would things. never have thought that would be together, but that's cool. Yeah. yeah, he gave us props on stage. D. Snyder did. It was awesome. Wow. Yeah. Yep. That's cool. I haven't heard very many good things about him from other musicians. Really? Yeah. He's still AJ before he died, too. That that sucked. Mm. Yeah, big time. I love that city. Uh, yeah, cities. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I never I never really heard anything bad about D. Snyder. Um, I'm not a lot of it doesn't make to the make it to the press. It seems like, but a, a couple of Beat Kings, one of them, and a few other people I've talked to over the years that have been in bands um, have dealt with them at shows, and they just don't care for them. Uh, bad attitude, prima donna. I've heard to describe them. So, mm. well, you know what? It, you know what? A lot of it is is Suzette. Suzette is a costume designer and. She gets herself into a lot of trouble with other bands, and then he has to be the fucking Long Island guy. Sorry, Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> but he's got to flip that fucking attitude to all these other bands, and then he gets a bad name out of it. Hey, I, sure, I was born attitude. in New York. <laughs> okay, that? well, yeah, he hates Crocus. I know that much. <laughs> he hates Crocus? Why? Yeah, he hates Crocus. Uh, look up that story. That's Oh, yeah, why, yeah. why is that? Oh, man. Um... Fuck, because I was that, the, uh, you know, yes, did a really costumes. shitty fucking job on their yeah. costumes. They didn't pay her, and then D got his Long Island attitude. Sorry, Tom. Sorry, Wayne. <laughs> All good. <laughs> Why, well, you're from Long Island too, Tom? New York? What? Are you from Long Island, uh, New no. York too? No. no. Why are you saying sorry to him? Why oh, you I thought say he said he's from the East Coast. Me? No. I'm yeah. from Albuquerque? <laughs> Illinois. I'm oh, Illinois. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. God. Are you even listening? Oh, Illinois. Is a... Hey, shush your hole. Shush. Uh, God. You're, st- you're too busy putting that Colonel outfit on. I'm what gonna the hell you're talking your about? fucking ass. I swear to <laughs> fuck, I'm going to kick your ass. I went off on this little tangent here, though, one of the things I was going to say is uh, you've always really reminded me a lot of Clive Burr, who's one of really? my favorite. Well, you're real roomy, but you're fluid, and you're out front, but you're always carrying the song forward. I don't know how to describe it better than that. Anna. Well, I like Clive, yeah. so that, that's cool. Thanks. That's very, uh, that's interesting, yeah. Cool. You're much more technical than he is, though, which I enjoy more. <laughs> and I'm completely filled with hate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> I get it out of my system. Yeah. <laughs> When you were writing for these two albums, was there like any crossover at all, song wise? Um, the lyrics for Revival I was writing while I was in Elder God. Uh, there was a completely different music 
piece written for it, but mm-hmm. we, it never got finished as we broke up before all that happened. And um, it just nice. fit when Andy played that music. It oh, just perfectly fits. So yeah, because and and that's another thing I love about your playing. I can always tell it's you, no matter what yeah, you're doing. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And, that's uh, hard to do nowadays. That's why I would love for you guys to do a live album with the Thor stuff. Because I have to say that that band, you guys are so solid together. And it's yeah. The, they're they're my favorite versions of those songs. Nice. Now That's... most of the time, yeah. So this next Thor tour we have, John Leibel uh, is unable to go because <laughs> um, he and his wife are going to be having a child. So congrats to them. Uh, Matt Hamilton. Sucker. That's it. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> oh, well, wait. Golf clap. Yeah. Golf clap. So Matt Hamilton from Hex will be in his stead with Thor. So oh, okay, this should be pretty fun. I think that'd be really cool. Oh, I mean, yeah. I'm excited to see. Uh, well, won't get to see it because it's not coming here. But unless you go to Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> Was that in Illinois? <laughs> No, <laughs> no, it's a, that's a New York. Fuck all you guys. Albuquerque, so, New York. You opened for Raven in Minneapolis. You opened for Metal Church in Minneapolis. Yep. Any comparison? Any uh, good or good or bad? Both bands were super cool to us. It was it was great. There was when you do any sort of like major band thing, they they will either cut your sound. You only get a fraction of the PA. Not with those guys. Like, I can let it rip. It's like, yeah. So, nice. so yeah, we had the full volume that they did, which was great. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, doing, that was a killer show. Yeah, it was Both a lot of killer shows. We're doing Warbringer and Enforcer at uh, Amsterdam next. Yeah, uh, I want to see next, that. Yeah. That should be fun. So Nice. September sometime. Did you ever come out to New York? I've Yeah, there's... Uh, a club I love to play called uh, St. Vitus. Okay, yeah, awesome Brooklyn. Club. Brooklyn, yeah. So, yeah, uh, we have a lot of... That seems to be... Uh, yeah, it seems to be the place for the metal bands to go lately. Yeah. Mm. No, it's, a, it's an awesome place. So... I yeah. remember, you know, living and growing up in Jersey, always having to go to the damn Starland Ballroom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Jersey. <laughs> we had good shows in Jersey. We, had Trent. we played played champs in Trenton. Oh, nice! And, and they took shrink wrap, the plastic shrink wrap, and put around these gigantic TVs because they were afraid Impaler was going to splash blood absolutely everywhere. Yeah, that sounds so like come in Jersey. Like, our our <laughs> reputation precedes us. We were very. Do <laughs> you remember um, doing Minneapolis Metal Fest one? Yeah. Um, Akron was uh, on one of those at, at First Ave. No, it wasn't at First Ave. It was the first Minneapolis Metal Mayhem. It was at uh, the Quest. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and yeah, you guys were on the second stage, the, the yeah. up upstairs stage. I uh, I was eating uh, Bill's intestines, <laughs> and he was spitting, you know, gelatinized blood on me. I get home. <laughs> And I'm walking up my my back driveway, and my wife at the time is on our deck, which is on the second floor. She looks down at me and goes, did you get another fight? I'm like, no, I just went and saw Impaler. She's like, oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Because I was covered in gelatin. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. You always got a story, don't you? I have a picture of, of you at an Impaler show, and you're, like, trying to bite me. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's because I posted it on your page. I'm biting your tit. That's with Scott Heddle. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. Know Scott. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds about right. You posted so, it. Well, that was, you know I have it then. You know, you know what, what, when that was taken? That was at, uh, that was at Roots uh, Memorial. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. With God Awful and, yeah. Yep. That's when that hey. was taken. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, was... Good I, memory. Yeah. Yeah. I only ever got to see you with Impaler once, I think down in Virginia somewhere. Oh, with yeah. uh, 
Reaping Esmodea, right? Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't remember much of the show because I was on LSD at the time, but <laughs> I think it was a good time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I brought my kit, and my kit filled the entire stage, and everyone's like up in front of me and angry. Hey. That's right. <laughs> I remember. Bill did the killing thing on the floor. Yeah, That's awesome. he did. He had to because he could. There's no room on stage to do it. <laughs> you always bring your full kit. Uh, back then, I did have the. I did bring everything, and it's a 12-piece, three-tiered <laughs> kit. Yeah. So I have stripped it down to a nine piece now, darn. <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot of I mean I need to strip down strip it down more. Just I like I like the big kit, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's That's a, a pain in the ass at the end of the night. Yeah. Mine's an eight piece and I would usually bring it with me every time I did a show. But sometimes you just play those small little places and you just gotta condense. <laughs> Try to anyway. Yeah, fully fully mine is a twelve piece. Yeah, wow. That's cool. <laughs> well, it's beautiful noise, day. Tom. It's beautiful what noise every time you sit back there. I said it's beautiful noise. Thank you. You set it all up yourself? Did no I roadies? What? You set the whole drum kit up yourself? No roadies uh, or anything? I've had drum techs. Yeah. Um, I haven't had any lately. <laughs> uh, Brandon Krogstad was my drum tech for a long time through Impaler. Yeah. But Thor, I really don't need it because I'm not using my kit unless okay. we play locally. All and right. I'll, damn it, they keep putting me on four piece drum kits. Oh, like, what, like, where's the rest of it? <laughs> I look like a monkey fucking a pumpkin. <laughs> so we, we actually have to travel with a double pedal because we don't trust yeah. a lot of the promoters to bring us the double pedal. Right. Like, <laughs> You give me a four piece and better have a double pedal. So we just started bringing one. You're probably air jam. You're, you're air drumming half the time, right? Where's the rest of my kit? You have to summon your inner Ian Pace. Even Terry Bozio. Well, he's got. He makes my kit look small. Yeah, he's, uh, oh yeah, he's got a twenty four piece kit, right? Thursday, oh, I mean, he used to have yeah. tinier kits. Yeah. He's a badass drummer. No doubt about it. Lipstick and all. Who's your favorite drummer? Who made you get to? Who made you want to? You know, uh, pick the drums to actually play. Like who got uh, you? Hearing to play? hearing twenty one twelve on eight track when I was a wee lad. Like yeah. hearing the f- true finger of God on drums. <laughs> like yes, the I shall inherit the earth. Yep. Nice. Yep. It's funny. I'm I'm still like kind of a newbie to Rush. So I don't know Neil Peart. I mean, he's good. He's okay. Wow. I don't know. Okay, well, I can look at the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's he's one of the best drummers, you know, of our time. You know, really. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I, he he didn't influence me because I can't even come close to what he plays. I wouldn't even attempt to try to play a Rush song. I would just butcher it. Uh, I, mean, I can do be... Limelight. Everybody does Limelight. You'll be fine. I can, I can butcher that. I'm sure without Neil Peart, Mike Portnoy would be a much different drummer. Oh, hell yeah. Yep. He'd, play. he'd be Carmine Anthony is what he'd be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. And do you think I'm sexy? <laughs> that is Carmine. Oh, yeah. He's in Rod Stewart. Wow, I've right. been meeting you, but from Minnesota, man, it's been a very long time. <laughs> my fa- my favorite Garmine stuff is actually when he was in a uh, cactus with cactus? Tim Bogert. Yeah, the first King Cobra was pretty cool. Minus the, the whole... first King Cobra was really cool. What are you fucking hippie? Hey, what's up? <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> doing good. <laughs> oh, you guys still doing your show? Oh, yeah, yep. yeah, we'll be wrapping oh, up in right. a couple that's minutes here. <laughs> yeah, so you want to join in the show too? He'd get right in the middle. <laughs> It's funny yeah, okay. yeah. I'll, I'll talk to you guys. After, uh, you want to do your story? Because we're I getting to, we're getting to the hour mark. So, all right. So uh, hold on. Let me put your music put on. Music, baby. Go. Hey kids, everybody, gather around. It's time for stories with Uncle Saxon. He does. I, I just do this so we can break it. Oh, 
Okay. Edit the show. Yeah, I don't really put your music on. Was, I don't know. <laughs> somewhere around 2007, maybe? Um, Ingve Malmsteen was supposed to come and play the fine line. It might have been even earlier, maybe 2005 or four. I'm not going to, I'm guessing at the date. And Ingve Malmsteen was supposed to come play the fine line. Well, Ingve Malmsteen's band quit on him, as they do basically every third show. <laughs> so Lizzie Borden was going to headline. But they had to get, get a couple of um, local bands to come in as support. It was just originally going to be Ingve and Lizzie, and that's it. Yep. But they got these two bands. One was called The Unholy. Never heard of them. Whatever. Um, and then another band called Opaque. Never heard of them either. The Unholy comes on. And this monster fucking drummer just starts beating the shit out of his drums. And there's uh, smoke. Uh, they got the uh, smoke things, you know, coming out. The dry ice. I don't know what you guys do. But it was great, and I would, became an Unholy fan, and I bought, uh, what was the name of your album, Tom? Uh, as Above, So Below, or something? Uh, yep, As as Below, So Above, and uh, Ash Wednesday. Okay, but, well, I, I bought one of them. But that, uh, anyway, that one so is Tom, actually... Tom opened up that show, and I was, I was astounded. It was great. Oh, this shit fucking piece of garbage crap. <laughs> And just the worst band I've ever seen in my life named Opaque came on afterwards. <laughs> Are these your friends, Tom? Tom, I'm sorry if I'm offending your friends. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, that's fine. Uh, okay. I, I do know Brad I'm Miller. Not, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> sorry. These guys come on. I love Opaque. My buddy Joe used to have a... Um, well, we used to throw change at the band if we didn't like them. So we had a good, oh, I don't know, five, six dollars worth of change in our pocket that <laughs> night. And we're just whipping quarters at these guys the whole show. And about midway through the show, um, the keyboard player who was bending his keyboards back and forth like this, like he's totally rocking out, like, yeah, look at me. To this god awful fucking music, he stops and goes, "Whoever's throwing shit at us, you know, I'll meet you outside." And my buddy Joe goes like this. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, at the end of the show, basically the whole band comes out to the front of the stage and says, "I see you. Let's meet outside. We're gonna kick your ass." Blah blah blah. We were standing right next to the old exit where you could go into the uh, into the alleyway to go smoke cigarettes, Tom. Yep. At the fine line. And this guy standing there turns out to be a security guard. We had no idea. We were standing, like, within inches of this guy. He goes, you guys are just whipping ice cubes at him, right? Yeah. We were just whipping ice cubes at him. Big deal. We were whipping fucking quarters and half dollars and... If I, you know, Saskatchewan's, we were just chucking everything. <laughs> Wheat pen. And he goes, you know something? I've worked punk shows. They spit on the bands when they don't like them. So, all right, cool. We, we, you know, it's awesome. So me and Joe go out into the alley. You know, they're loading out in the back, you know, where it's all roped off or uh, fenced off back there. And, yep. and up to the fence and it's like, here we are. Here we are, opaque. Please. Please. I've got more money to throw at you. But they wouldn't come. They they wouldn't have anything to do with us. And I know they were on root of all evil. But uh, Earl really, really fucked up when he signed that band. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen the money at Unholy because we go, fuck, we're getting paid. <laughs> I was just going to say, it was probably. I bought your CD. <laughs> well, there you go. Then, I was trying to tell them between the eyes so they would just shut up. <laughs> so that is Uncle Saxon's true life story for 
this evening with Tom Croxton, who was the drummer of the opening band for that show, who kicked ass. And then Lizzie came on and just destroyed the place. I mean, that was a great, great fucking Lizzie show. Yeah. For that situation. All right. Tom? Right, was it? <laughs> Remember that show? I do. Mm-hmm. I do. All right. And to do well, another Lizzie show with uh, Tim Baylor, too, um, a mm. couple years back. He didn't remember us or remember me. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. So, what are you guys wearing? Tom, what are you wearing? Uh, Onslaught. Onslaught? Yeah. What the album? Six, six, six? I think that's six. What? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Six, yeah. Six, six, six. Yep. How about you, Noggle? I got Deceased, Luck of the Corks. Their first album, which it has an <laughs> awesome picture uh, from the 1964 movie Black Sabbath. On the phone. Oh. And right on. Me too. Yeah, I, uh, we'll oh, yeah, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> Take over, Noon. I'm just wearing a Joker shirt. Nice. No music. No music. Uh, at least you left that fucking mask off this week. <laughs> ah, Christ, I shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have said that, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted me to put the mask back on, so I will. <laughs> oh, my Christ, he's taking his shirt off. What hey, man, we were only that? talking about that Rod Stewart song, you know what I mean? <laughs> It's way better than burning for you, I'll tell you that. It, uh, dude, that's an argument for another maybe, day. Maybe that girl in the trunk can rub oil on you. <laughs> uh, Wait, baby. Did, you let her, did you let her up? Because it's pretty hot. I heavy while she's laying in the trunk of my car. Well, I was, did you let her out of the trunk? Is she still in there? Oh, there she is. Oh, there she is. Good. I'm glad you're out of the trunk now. Love you guys. By the way, next week's special guest is opaque. (laughs) (laughs) I think you're jukebox money. (laughs) (laughs) I figured I'd wait till you finish that story. (laughs) All right, fellas. All right. I got to go take a leak. Let's go forth and be metal. Thank you very much, Tom, for coming on. Thanks, Tom. My pleasure. I really Thanks. appreciate uh, all the uh, hats you uh, getting on the uh, Skype no with us and everything. Really appreciate it. No worries. Fantastic drummer. Fantastic album. Hex Thank Vortices. Appreciate it. Yeah. Everybody go out and buy it. Where can go everybody... buy it now. Come Where see us people... August 3rd. Where can people get the album? Uh, hopefully, well, ZBR Records, Twin Town Tyrant Records. Hoping to have it in cheapos soon. Oh, nice. And there's a. Uh, DPR stands for Zero Budget Records, and I think that's actually the the dot com is zero budget records dot com, right? Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, if you go to Hex Vortices Facebook, the links are there. Yeah, right, nice. Yeah. How are you not burning your butt right now? What and butt? with that. <laughs> <sighs> oh, my God. What the fuck is going on here? All right. I can't oh, show you that. <laughs> We're getting out of here before somebody starts shooting ping pong balls. Good idea. Oh. <laughs> You're a bad man. You got a tiny wiener. <laughs> All right. See you guys next week again. Thank you, Tom, so much. Good luck with the Thanks, album. Tom. Good luck Appreciate with the it. tour and, and everything with Thor and all that other stuff. So Thanks, have a good night, everybody. Hope you had fun, bro. Bye.